Sega Genesis golf games, boy are they all pretty similar. My problem with golf video games as a genre is that the initial learning curve is often very high. Even if the game provides the right information, they often don't properly convey it to a first time player. It's also easy for a golf game to feel too slow, which makes the delicate balance of fun, challenge, and reward even more difficult. My favorite golf video games are the Mario Golf series and um, Pena Golf for the PC. Uh, as a kid, these older golf games usually bored me silly, uh, so I'm gonna go into these completely blind from the perspective of a first time player. So let's see if any are friendly to somebody who hasn't picked up a 16-bit golf video game in decades. I'll try to go somewhat chronologically, okay. First up is Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf, which came out in 1989 by Sega. It appears to be the very first golf game for the system, and one of the earliest games in general for the Genesis. And it shows. The game is pretty dated. I like that you can select your own personalized club set. For the first time player though, these numbers don't mean anything. How am I supposed to know how far a 5 would go compared to a 5 iron? It's pretty crucial info, just, just tell me all right. Man. The graphics are sort of arcadey. Uh, for 1989, they're really not bad. I thought they were, they're actually pretty good. And some of the music is, is both fresh and chill, but since you'll hear it over and over for every hole, it, it does kind of wear on you eventually. Anyway, the A button cycles through all the various steps to hitting a shot. There's an actual weather vane to show you the wind direction and strength of it, and you can hit the C button to check back with your caddy about some other info that really should just be on screen, uh, in my opinion. There's kind of a lot of wasted space uh, in the interface. And again, we've got something else here that would be confusing to someone who is unfamiliar with golf or and hasn't picked up a game before. Look at your feet. You can shuffle your feet around, and that will affect whether you hit a draw or a fade shot. But this isn't obvious, it's just all trial and error, which I guess a lot of video games are, but come on, just help us out here. So A will start your swing, the blue bar is your strength, and somewhat unique to this game, the green bar is actually the height of your shot, instead of how poorly you slice or hook your ball. Uh, not that the game conveys any of this. I couldn't really figure out if you can put any spin on the ball, but probably not. Um, it's just a little bit unintuitive. And unlike many other golf games, this one does not automatically suggest a particular club for each shot either. You better make sure you check what club you have before starting your swing. But still, how, the, how are you supposed to know how far each club will go? Other games at least give you some sort of reference point, but this one does not. You have to know how far a 5 iron is going to go. I don't know how far that's going to go, come on! Putting is okay in this game, but there's there's no sense of scale for how hard to hit the putt. It's another thing that's just completely trial and error. It's really stupid how easy it is to over or under hit the ball. And sometimes your caddy will give you shit about it too. Fuck you. Every ninth hole, there's uh, this little coffee break cutscene, which is kind of cute. It's just a little clip with Alex Kidd in it. Remember that? From what I read online, the caddy will give you better advice as you proceed through the game. Uh, and you can also unlock different club sets and stuff like that, but good lord, I can't handle this game for any longer, so let's just move on to the next one. Zany Golf is from Electronic Arts from 1990. I don't even know where to start with this one. It's a putt-putt style game. Oh my god, it's so fucking zany! I can't handle it! Okay, the windmill is classic putt-putt stuff, but the rest, I guess, is zany. I felt like I was getting the hang of it, but this pinball stage really fucked me over good. I'll be damned if I'm gonna go through the last few holes just to get back to it. If the frame rate wasn't so choppy and the music wasn't so bad, it might be worth a few run-throughs, but I, I just say stay away from this one. If you're desperate to improve or see the rest of the holes, I guess there's a practice mode. Um, I don't care. The burger stage was stupid. PGA Tour Golf from 1991 is another Electronic Arts title. Holy shit, am I using Windows 3.1? Oh man, these menus. Okay. Okay. All right. Once you're actually playing the game, it's pretty straightforward. 
You press the thing to hit the thing. One thing I did like is the game helpfully scales your shot distances around. Uh, it seems to know what it's doing, and there are some special shots that you can use to further alter the distances. Uh, it's actually pretty helpful. God, that wind really carries the ball, doesn't it? The putting in this game isn't terrible. The 3D map of the green is almost overly detailed. That giant plot of topographical lines is seems to be the same size no matter how far or close you are. The way the game scales the power makes things a lot less complicated though. I do wish the game had music other than just the crazy jarring bits in between the holes, but otherwise this isn't the worst game by a long shot and it, uh, it kind of holds your hand a little bit, but in a good way. As you can see from all the fast forwarding I've been doing, my, my major complaint other than the lack of music is just kind of how slow the game progresses. Nice job EA! Pretty good improvement over the Arnold Palmer game. Battle Golfer Yui from 1991 is another game by Sega. It seems to be primarily a heavily text-based adventure story type of game, but you can just get straight to golf without having to fumble through a whole bunch of uh, text branch tree whatevers to get to it. Once you're in, the interface isn't too confusing, even if it's not in English. Uh, the fourth menu option will tell you how far you are from the hole. Uh, selecting your club will actually indicate their maximum distances. You can put spin on the ball. Uh, it's really not bad, even though it's all top down. It, the mechanics are just a little tougher to figure out. You'd probably have to put some time in to really get going. The putting is, is much more difficult. There's very little to go on there. So that's kind of trial and error. Overall, it's not the worst game, um, but I don't know. There's others that I'd rather play. Putter Golf is another Sega game uh, from 1991. It's a, it's like a mini golf game. Oh God, this cursor is so slow. Oh, you can hold, you can hold a button to speed it up. There seems to be quite a variety of courses. The gameplay is about as simple as it gets, but is pretty unforgiving at times. Ugh. 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 Hole in one! Okay, that's enough of this game. PGA Tour Golf 2 is from Electronic Arts, of course, from 1992. A yearly sequel to a sports games by EA? Is it mostly the same as the original? Yes. I mean, th they stuck with the Windows 3.1 Apple II menu bullshit, and th the rest of the GUI is pretty much the same too. The graphics look pretty much the same. There's, there's just more courses, I guess. Actually, for some reason, this game feels more difficult. The, the wind and the miss hits really seem to affect the ball more than the original. original. But maybe that's just because I've had a little bit to drink here now that I'm playing this one. World Class Leaderboard Golf from 1992 is by US Gold. Pretty cool intro song. Boy, menus sure have come a long way, huh? You have to fumble through the options screen to set up anything for your game. Once you're actually playing, the in-game interface is decent at least. Jesus, you have to hold the power button down and then let go? Better be ready, asshole! And for the control section, Jesus, fuck! Man, if you miss that real bad, the ball fades like a mug. Some of the holes seem to make it faster than others, and it seems to vary depending on each, each shot that you take. Uh, it's, I don't know. At first, it seems you're out of luck again on how far your clubs will hit the ball, but actually your caddy advice screen will give you a recommendation for which club and how hard to hit it, as well as the other club distances. That's pretty cool. You still have to figure out what medium and soft mean exactly though, and how the surface and wind will affect the shot. Sometimes the advice is spot on.
sometimes it's really weird. Putting can be a bit of a nightmare, but there's very little to go on. I guess the stick and its shadow represents the angle of the hill. The little dotted area is nice. That's your that's your tap in zone. Um, I still get a, I, I still struggled to get decent distance on most of my first putts, but once you get it to the hole, the tap in allows it to go in no pretty easily. Ah! Who is that? Their voice clips. The game was fun for a little while. I started eventually just getting kind of impatient. There's no in-game music and that tends to give me like anxiety. The game itself is pleasant to play. Just put on some background music. It's faster than some games. It's not quite as in-depth as others. It had a logic that I feel like I was starting to get a hang of and I bet I could get a lot better at it. This is actually a pretty good game. It did not make me want to kill myself. Top Pro Golf from 1992 is by Soft Vision International. Whoa, handy mode. Select a player to fight with. Yeesh, skinhead guy's a little offensive. Let's go with Nico. He's got a big triangle and he looks like Pat Sajak. Oh, I guess it's just when you play against each other head to head. Great, Sajak's gonna kick my ass. Wow, look at this fucking interface. Pros, there's lots of information right in front of you, especially about your clubs. Cons, look at all this wasted space. You can at least put some spin on the ball uh, after you decide on that while the game hangs as it reloads your view. It's annoying to have to hold down the button and let go when you want to hit the ball, just like that other game. The speed of the meter and how it loops tends to make it really easy to hit the ball like a foot in front of you. Shit! Fuck! Fuck you, Pat Sajak! I like this guy's face, though. And the 3D vector preview is pretty cool for its time. They spelled bogey wrong. I guess this game's fine. Chi Chi's Pro Challenge Golf from 1993 was also known as Top Pro Golf 2 in Japan. In fact, when you sink a ball, if you look in the cup, it still says Top Pro on the inside. Let's, uh, let's, wait. Which one am I selecting? Am I red or white? These menus and 90s backgrounds are killing me. Okay, I guess it's white. Uh, let's be mustache guy. As with most games, it's difficult to tell how much the different surfaces of the course will affect the distance on your shots. The game is still really slow. Just like the last one, putting is done in sort of mode 7-ish. There's not a lot of info to go on. But I did like making my character's face upset. So not a whole lot has changed from Top Pro Golf. They did away with the cool vector preview and now do this kind of overhead scrolling thing. You can hold up to speed through it because it's kind of slow, or you can just hit a button. They also fixed the hold the power button down mechanic and now use the more popular press to stop the meter mechanic. So it's less likely that you're going to hit a shot two feet in front of you. I don't know, I guess it's a better game than the first, but it's not saying much. At least they both had music. Pebble Beach Golf Links. Pebble Beach Golf Links. Yeah, that's what I said. Is from T&E Soft in 1993. The T&E games are tough to sort out chronologically. Okay, okay, I, I get it with the waves. There's a bunch of different versions. I said I get it! The important thing is that T&E Soft knows how to get shit done. Like these flyover previews for each hole. Sure, they're slow and choppy, but they always have rad music. And you can and you can skip them too. The interface is just about perfect. It's clean, it's not super cluttered, and there's no obnoxious fucking chi-chi border. 
The game redraws the screen a little quicker than some of the other games. You can easily get a higher view, and the game actually shows you how you'll draw, fade, hook, or slice your shot with your little with your little stance there. Yeah. Ooh, shuffle your feet. Pretty much all the information you could want or need is right in front of you, like information about your clubs, your distances, all the things. It's right there. The power gauge has a little bit of a weird acceleration that makes it hard to time, and setting the spin on the ball is also a little awkward, but it's not hard, you'll figure it out. The wind will fuck you up, but otherwise hitting around each hole isn't too irritating. Putting is still a little bit arduous. I do like that you get both a grid and like an elevation cutaway, but it's still hard to figure out exactly how much to put into each shot. Your putter is apparently good for 100 feet, but I had trouble getting the hang of how far any one section of the meter will get. Ah, oh, what the fuck? In the end, this game is still pretty great overall. It's challenging, but rewarding. It's not super frustrating. I could see myself playing this pretty long term. And the music, the in-game music is perfect. It's up there, this is one of the best. Jack Nicholas's Power Challenge Golf from 1993's by Accolade. Hmm. This info before each hole doesn't seem necessary since you can see everything on the course in the map that pops up after. These visuals are pretty nasty too. It looks like just a bunch of blobs of pixels. The Mortal Kombat style character sprites look pretty bad too. And what's this? Complete silence. Wow. By 1993, this should not be happening. The interface is really cluttered, but at least there's helpful info. I don't get the swim mechanic though. I think each white bar is 10% of your club's total strength, but that's totally a guess. Oh my god, this game is slow. The amount of time it takes to aim my shots is painful. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, 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 but I just want to hit the ball! You also don't get to see where your ball landed until you're setting up your next shot. Putting isn't the worst, but ugh. The tap-in function is, is pretty genius here. If you're about a foot from the hole, the game will automatically hit it just the right amount. I use this a lot since putting from actual distances was frustrating at best. The game controls not so terribly, but the silence and the bad visuals make this one hard to recommend. There's better ones to play. Devil's Course from 1994 is another T&E soft game. This one made it to the US under a different title, but the Genesis port never made it out of Japan. It's just another one of T&E soft games, but with wild fantasy influenced courses. It's really difficult too. Unless you're hardcore, I don't really recommend it, even though I really like their interface. It's easy for this type of shit to happen. What? This game really does have the best music though. New 3D golf simulation Wailea no Kiseki is another t and soft game from 1994. It takes place in Hawaii. <sighs> you always know what you're getting into with a t and game. More t and different courses. These guys were really cranking them out back then. This might actually be the first game that was developed in the series, but for the Super Nintendo, it didn't hit the Genesis until 94 though, but like Devil's Course, it had a different name. Ugh. Anyway, the important thing is it's just as good as any of the other T&D soft games. That's really all you need to know. P. 
PGA Tour Golf 3 from 1994 is by EA Sports. Along with the change from Electronic Arts to EA Sports are the menus. They're finally updated and don't look like complete garbage. Control over the ball spin is pretty cool now. The animations are also really smooth. These games still need more music though. On the whole, the gameplay is pretty much the same as before. I guess if you're gonna play one of these PGA Tour games, maybe this is the most polished one. Maybe. I don't know. Here's some more footage. PGA European Tour from 1994 is, of course, by EA Sports. Is it just another PGA game with different courses? The answer is yes. This one seems to be more similar to PGA Tour 2 rather than 3, though. <laughs> Whole browser. Oh my god. There's another EA game? Really? <laughs> PGA Tour 96 is from 1995 by EA Sports. Oh god, the menus in this one. Ugh, why does this take so long? The new swing mechanic is weird. It seems a little unintuitive at first, but I guess it works just about as well as the others. I like the overall presentation of the game though, it looks a little bit more TV-ish, I guess for lack of a better word. They finally did away with that weird putting grid and swapped it for another awkward grid this time, but it's dots. Jesus, oh my god, oh my god, it takes so long to load each shot, this is too much. Especially the green, I can't, I can't do this, please give me back the topographical grid. Look, I'm not some authority on golf games, or sports games in general, I'm just some idiot making videos. I'm not even that good at these golf games. If you really want to play one of these, go with a T&E soft game, or World Class Leaderboard, or even one of the PGA Tour games, they're all pretty okay. Otherwise, just go outside or go play a Mario Golf game, the Hot Shots games are pretty good, Pena's pretty good, the arcade ones are my favorite. Look, it's... They're all just fine. I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start drinking now. <sighs> Thanks for watching. This has been Ball Champions. More videos are on the way.